Hi, my name is Jonathan Silva, trainer at Pragmatic Works. And in this video, we are going to look into some of the new custom formatting options for shapes and buttons in Power BI Desktop. So without further ado, let's go hop into a report and take a look at some of these different options we now have in the most recent Power BI updates that have come out since August of 2021. All right, so what we see in this report are all the different shapes available to us here in Power BI Desktop. Now these shapes have been available for quite some time, but since August of 2021, we are now given a little bit more of the custom formatting options that we can play around with for each of these different shapes. Now you can see there are different types of shapes here. We have our rectangles, our general basic shapes, and also our block arrows there at the bottom. And as a reminder, to go ahead and insert these shapes, we're gonna use the insert tab or ribbon at the top, and we're gonna just select the shape dropdown. And you notice there, we have all the different shapes that I've just placed into this report page within Power BI Desktop. So what we can do is let's choose a few shapes to play around with and look at some of these custom formatting options that we have. So we could just simply maybe we choose this first triangle here. We can make this a little bit larger that we can play around with so we can see it a little bit better. We can change up the fill color. This is not something that's necessarily new, but something we could still use to play around with. Maybe we choose a purple. We can edit the transparency level of that color to make it more or less transparent as we play with it. I'm gonna move this title a little bit further away. We can also change the outline color of the shape. Right now it's still in the default blue there, but we can change that to maybe be, uh, an orange or a gold. Maybe that looks a little bit better there. We can bump up the outline weight there so see it'll, it'll pop a little bit more on the screen for us. And again, we could change up the transparency of the outline there. As you notice, as we make that more transparent, it gets a little bit more into that fill color of that purple there. We can also add in some text onto our shape. So if we turn on the text, we can go ahead and just maybe put a label of our shape there. Our font color, we're gonna keep that in white and we can bump up our text size nice and large. We can also change the type of text family if we wanted to, maybe do a little bit more bold or anything that might match up the uh, font family that we might use within our organizational theme. We can change in the vertical and horizontal alignment and also add in a little bit of bumper to our margin for our text within that shape. So we can move it around there and make it a little bit easier to have so we can read it. We can also, from our formatting options here, just change up our shape on the fly. So if we didn't want this shape to be the isosceles triangle that we've originally selected, we can go ahead and choose any of the other shapes that are available to us just in our general shape dropdown. So maybe we wanna make this a, a rounded rectangle instead. On the fly, we can go ahead and we can do that. Or we can just revert that back to the way it was. I believe this was, again, the isosceles triangle. So we can go ahead and put it back there. We could change up the, the edges, make it a little bit more rounded, right, for our triangle shape there. And we can change up the tip position a little bit if we wanted to move up that tip position a little bit further one way or the other. I like the default setting there, so we're gonna put that back to that. We can also add in a shadow for our shapes. So if we go ahead and turn on the shadow for our shape, we can then, using the drop down, select what type of shadow, what color we want for that shadow, and the positioning of that shadow as well. So let's keep it a black shadow because that tends to look pretty good. We'll decrease the transparency to make it a little bit more prevalent for us. We can increase the blur, which kind of changes the feel of the shadow or decrease the blur there. You can see how it affects the, the size of the shape itself. We can choose the position of the shadow as well. Right now, the shadow is in the bottom right of the shape, but we can choose to have it at the top, top left, uh, center, right, bottom, all these other options we have. We can even choose to customize where that shadow is appearing on that shape itself. On top of that, we can also add a glow. Now what I'm gonna do is I'll just simply use a different shape to add in the glow to give it a little bit different feel. So I'll choose this drop, uh, this down arrow here. So let's go ahead and add in a glow to this one just to see the differences between all of them. And the shape glow that we've added here, you can see, and I'll make this a little bit larger for us, is this blue outline, uh, the blue glow on the outline. And so right now it's in, again, it's the default color, but if we wanted to change that to any other color that we might want to use, 
maybe a red or we can go to a black to have it there. We can increase the transparency or decrease the transparency. We can increase the blur or decrease the blur. Notice when you do that, it changes the general feel of the shape itself. Okay, or we can just simply turn that off if we don't like it. We can also choose to rotate our shapes. So if we have a shape there, but we want to turn it on its axis there, we can choose to either move it along the, the line here and choose the rotation as, as we want, or we can type in the type of rotation. Maybe I want it 180 degrees. So I could flip that on its edge, or maybe I wanted to put make it 90 degrees to one side, or if I want to change that to 45 degrees. We can change the rotation of that to match whatever we want to see. Now, what we can also do is simply choose to just do the shape itself or the text itself. This, this first option will rotate everything, while these other two options will specifically only rotate the shape or the text within the shape. So again, it gives us a little bit more control, a little bit more feel into the formatting options within our shape itself. And as always, we could play around with the title on our shape. We can have a different background. We can have a border. We can really play around with a lot of different things that we want to have just generally within that specific shape. Now, a lot of these options have been around for about two, three months now. One of the new things that we see within Power BI Desktop is that we stay, have the exact same options now with our button. Now, if we go over to our second page here, our button page here, what we see are the original buttons that have been. Uh, within Power BI for quite some time. Okay, these stock buttons again, if you go into the insert tab or ribbon at the top and select the button drop down, you can see all of them. Now, what we now have as far as uh, custom formatting options with our buttons is the option to insert a custom shape as the button. Now, in order to do that, we can go ahead and just insert a default blank button. I'm going to make this nice and large for us this time. And when we have that, that button selected, we can come over to our formatting pane on the right hand side here. And now we can see we have the exact same options with our buttons that we did with our shapes. Now, one of the great things about this is we can turn this button here, this just general default rectangle into any one of the other shapes that we've had originally within Power BI. So if I use the shape drop down here, I can choose instead of having this as a rectangle, well, maybe I wanted to make this one of the other shapes that we were working with. I can change it to that isosceles triangle that we were working with on the previous uh, page, or I can change it to a chevron arrow if I wanted to. And so now with this new shape, that this button that I've turned into a shape, I can have again, the exact same formatting options I've done before. So I can add in some fill. I can maybe make this, we'll change this to a, a, get a custom color and maybe make it a green. We can decrease the transparency to make it a little bit more uh, bold there. We can have an outline. Maybe we would want to turn off the outline in this case. We can add text just as we did with our shape. We can add a shadow to this just as we've done before. So right now the color of the shadow is in black. Well, let's decrease transparency to see a little bit darker. We can increase the blur of that, or we can decrease the blur of it, right? Make it a little bit harder edge there on our shadow. We can set the where the position of the shadow is, bottom right. Well, maybe we want it on the top left, or maybe we just simply want it left, so the inside of the chevron itself. We can also do the same again with the glow, the rotation, title, and all the other actions that we've had within our shapes we now have within our button. And again, remember, if you want this button to work, uh, we have to go ahead and turn on the action. So if we want to have the action set up, we want to make it a maybe a back button or a bookmark drill through. We can have a specific page navigation if we have multiple pages. Maybe in this case, I want to navigate to back to our shapes page. So that way, when I do our control click, it will then take me back to our shapes page. So our button now has the action. And some of the other formatting options that we have within Power BI Desktop is with our buttons, we can insert different types of buttons that are now custom to whatever we want. So to show this, I'm going to go ahead and insert another blank button. Again, this is our default shape for our buttons if we want to go ahead and change it to a different shape. If I want to go ahead and change up that shape there, okay, I can use uh, all the other shapes that we have available to us. 
Okay, maybe we want to keep it as a, a rectangle, or if we want to change it to, uh, let's go ahead and just choose maybe a pill shape, or uh, yeah, we could do a pill shape, a little bit of more of a rounded edge there. Okay, if we then change up the fill, we can choose to use an image as the fill in this case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use our logo here for Pragmatic Works as the fill for our pill there. And so what I have is I've, I've just set the fit to uh, normal. You can do it to fill or to fit. I like the I like the fit because it'll change up every time I change up the shape of our button here. We can decrease the transparency because I like that bold look of our logo there. Okay, we can then go ahead and add all the other formatting options that we've seen with our shapes and our buttons before. So if I want to have the outline off, I can go ahead and do that or I can turn it on. If I want to put on text, in this case, we don't need text because we already have some there. We can add a shadow and a glow to our button as well, right? To make it look a little bit more bold there. I'm going to try to match our color scheming there and have our glow there and see if we can have that a little bit more blurred out so we can have all of the feel of that button there. And so what we can do now is if we add an action to this button, I can say that if we select this button, which is our logo for Pragmatic Works, I want to be able to navigate to our website. So if I select our web URL, I can then go ahead and type in pragmaticworks.com and have this button every time we select it to navigate us to our web page. And of course, it brings me up on another monitor. And if I bring it in here, we can now see that it's already done that for us. Okay, so it's a great way to, to have uh, an option for your end users. Maybe you want to put this into the bottom corner or something, or in the top corner for your end, for your end users to have access to if they have any more questions, they have anything they want to see further about your organization, they can now do that with this new button. Okay, let's go ahead and insert another custom button to see what it, the look and feel of it. So what we can do, again, if we insert a custom blank button, here's our default shape, we can then go ahead and actually change this icon as a custom icon that we want to have that might be different than what we originally see within Power BI Desktop. So if I select the icon dropdown in our formatting pane, I can choose a custom icon. So instead of the original icons that we have here, our left and right arrow, our curled arrow, our back, we have information, our question, our, our thought bubble, bubble there, our bookmark, okay, we can do all of this plus a custom. Now for the custom, you can add any image that you want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in this share feedback icon. And when I do that, I can now choose again our fit here. We could choose it to fit, we could choose it to fill right, anything that we want. And we can then go ahead and customize this icon to really work and feel any way that we want to have it for our end users. So if we want to keep our vertical alignment down the middle there, a horizontal alignment again in the middle, we can choose to bump up our margins. Maybe we want to do all of them the same here. I'm just going to increase our margins a little bit. So then our button kind of gets pushed a little bit more into the middle of that shit general shape there. We can do all the other formatting options that we've seen with all the other buttons and shapes from this point. And if we want to, we can go ahead and add actions. We can have really all the touch and feel that we want to have with this shape and this button. We well, hope you found that very informative and helpful for your future reports that you're going to be generating here in the near future. Now, don't forget to go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button below so you can get more content, not just for myself, but from all of us here at Pragmatic Works to help you out in the future with everything that you're gonna be doing with not just Power BI, but all the other Power Platform applications. All right, well, that's it for me, and I'll see you next time.